we are going to have a fictitious company. And this company is about to publish its annual results. And in the computer system, the figures at the moment show a profit of just one million. Whereas the City of London, the boys and the girls on their computers buying and selling shares, they think the profits are going to be a hundred million. So there's a, an expectation and a 99 million gap. And we are making final adjustments, ready to prepare those final accounts. And we know one thing, that profits do have a connection to the share price. Profits do drive share prices. So I'm going to do a little exercise with you. Here's what it's about. I'm going to give you three options and find out how dodgy you are based on your response to the three options. Option one is where we have some sales in 2020, which is the next year. And we are looking at counts for 2019. And we have an opportunity to make a little journal adjustment in our computer system. And 99 million of sales that were in 2020 could actually be brought into 2019. And 99 million plus 1 million is 100 million and the City of London will be rocking because the share price will go where we want it. That's option one. Option two, option two is very different. Option two, we're going to make a little judgment. We're going to make a little estimate of a profit on a contract. And at one end, we might have an optimistic profit. At the other end, we might have a pessimistic. At the pessimistic end, this contract could be one million extra profit. At the optimistic end, it could be 99 million. And if you get it, the 99 million, the optimistic one, plus the million in the computer system, 100 million and the City of London will be rocking again. So that's option number two. Option number three, ah, option number three is quite different. We're not going to change the figures at all. What we're going to do is to produce in the annual report a really optimistic statement from the chairman and the executive saying that the next year is going to be really good. The figures will stay the same, the profit's a million, but the City of London gets some optimism. And it's up to you to decide whether it's one, whether it's two, whether it's three. And in making your decision, you have to bear in mind, at one end of the scale, we have fraud. At the other end of the scale, we have fair. And in between, we have those shades of grey. And I know what you guys are thinking. You're saying, Peter, how many shades of grey are there? Are there 19? Are there 21? I don't know how many shades of grey there are, but you have to make a decision. OK, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, look, I might have chosen one. I might have chosen two. I might have chosen three. Peter, tell me, am I fair? Am I fraud? Or am I in the shades of grey? Well, if you went for option one, you'd be changing the figures and that's manipulation and that's fraud. You're incredibly dodgy. And if you went for option three, you are totally, totally honest. But actually, I didn't get my bonus as an executive and the City of London didn't get the share price increase they were looking for. But if you went for option two, you were in those shades of grey. And those shades of grey, there are judgments you can make within the laws and regulations. And therefore, are you fair? Are you fraud? Or are you shades of grey? It's just a little bit of aggressive accounting. And that's the sort of exciting stuff we do in our lectures here at ABS. Accounting is great fun.